We talked about the fans throwing that bottle at Kyrie Irving as he was leaving the game. And after the game, this is what Kyrie did, as you see him right there at half court. He stomped on the logo, wiped his foot on it, so maybe that incensed the fan if he saw that. But it is still unacceptable for people to do that at arenas. And as Kevin Durant eloquently said, you need to grow up and you need to get over yourselves. It's bigger than you. It's about the game and they're not animals. So let's go to Kyrie Sound, see what he had to say about tonight's win and perhaps about the bottle throwing as well. It's unfortunate, you know, that sports has come to a lot of this, uh, you know, kind of crossroads where you're seeing a lot of old ways come up. It's been part of like, the, it's been part of that. It's been that way in history and in terms of entertainment and performers and sports for a long period of time of just underlying racism and just treating people like they're in a human zoo, you know, throwing stuff at people, saying things, you know, there's a certain point where it just gets to be too much. So, you know, I, I called it out. I just wanted to keep it strictly basketball. And then you just see that people just feel very entitled out here. You know, they pay for the tickets. Great. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that they're coming in to watch um, a great performance, but it, it's just, you know, we're not at the theater. We're not throwing tomatoes and, and other random stuff at the people that are performing. You know, it's just it's too much. And it's a reflection on, um, you know, us as a whole when you have fans acting like that. So, you know, hopefully people learn their lessons from being banned for however many years of being arrested. But, you know, it's always going to be an occasion. So. Greg Logan, Newsday. Uh, Kyrie. Can you just describe the motivation you had coming into this game? You didn't have your best performance in game three, but you handled everything tonight and, and kind of gave it back to the fans. So what, what was the feeling of satisfaction like for you? Oh, well, the job isn't finished. Uh, so it's just momentarily, uh, uh, moment, it's momentarily, so it's momentary, so. Brian Lewis, New York Post. You're muted, Brian. Hi, my apologies. I was asking what the difference was for you, Kyrie, from three to four. I mean, did you notice different ways that they were defending you? Did you do something to get yourself in a different mental headspace? What did you do from three to four that allowed you to come out and have a night like you had tonight? Uh, same things I've been doing uh, since I was a kid. You know, I've been in part of a lot of hostile environments since I was a kid. You know, it's not the first time uh, you know, in my life where I've had to bounce back uh, from one of those type of performances that isn't typical of me uh, in terms of the big stage. And I can't do it alone. So, you know, in between, uh, you know, last day or so, just spending some time with my teammates, spending time with myself, you know, just having some conversations to keep me balanced and grounded. And then go out there and have fun and, and play basketball at a high level. You know, it's, I'm grateful to be able to you know, put on the uniform um, and, and just go perform with some guys that are very selfless and you know, just, just want to see some good basketball out there. And we do the, the little things to help uh, each other win. Malika Andrews, ESPN. Kyrie, could you just um, walk us through what happened? I mean, did the fan yell at you? Did the bottle hit you? What, what happened? It doesn't matter, honestly, Malika. It, it's just... These actions, like I said, are historically relative, uh, you know, when, when you think about just where we've come at, as a sport. Uh, you know, it used to happen back in the day. Uh, a, a lot of older players went through it. Um, and any great person, great entertainer, performer, uh, understands that when you're achieving something bigger than yourself, you know, you're going to have a lot of adversity, animosity, um, and you just got to figure out a way to deal with it. So tonight... I think we collectively dealt with it. Um, you know, anything could have happened with that water bottle being thrown at me, but, you know, my brothers were surrounded around me. I had people in the crowd. Um, so just trying to get home to my wife and my kids. You mentioned, you know, treating you as human, which is a should be a basic right. I'm just wondering what you would want folks who feel entitled to do that to know about how that makes you feel. Well, we keep saying uh, things like we're human, we're human, uh, but we don't get treated like we have rights when uh, we're out there at times and people feel entitled to go and do things like that. 
you know, we, we claim that we care about each other as human beings, but, you know, we just call things out uh, before they happen, like I did the other day. And like, I'm telling people just keep it basketball. And then you have things that happen with, at the garden. You know, you got things happen in Utah and, uh, you know, there's a lot of history there of things happening. So just do your research. Uh, I, I would say to everybody and hopefully the respect of the game is uh, kept at a high level uh, moving forward. But I hope. Ian O'Connor, New York Post. Yeah, Kyrie, I was just wondering before that uh, water bottle was unfortunately thrown at you, uh, what did you feel in the crowd these two nights? Did you feel that racism or subtle racism that you had warned about? Or had they pretty much kept it strictly about basketball until that incident as you were walking off? Well, like I said, I, I've been in some hostile environments where a lot of things have been said to me, a lot of things have been done to my teammates, or I've, I've experienced uh, some type of uh, subtle racism that I'm referring to, you know, where it's just underlying throughout the game. You know, the things that they're saying, it, it's not necessarily about talent or gifts. It, it's just more or less about moms or what you look like or they're calling you out of your name. And like I said, you know, I joined this, uh, this sport because I loved it. Uh, and inevitably, you know, you're going to have opposing fans do things that are going to help their team win. You know, they love being involved. Um, I don't want to take away that nature. It's just when you get when you feel disrespected as a person, man or woman, and someone calls you out your name or does something like that, it doesn't make you feel good. And then when you react, and we had times in history where people have reacting and gone in the crowd, then we're wrong. And we need to we need to be civilized, and and we need to keep our calm, and we need to keep our cool, and then it's reflected on us. So, um, you know, like I said, just want to keep it. Uh, upfront and truthful, and it's just you know, unacceptable for that stuff to be happening. But we move on. So, Alex Schiffer, The Athletic. Harry, kind of piggybacking off Malika's question, uh, James just said before uh, you joined us that he doesn't think that banning fans does anything with this stuff because it continues to happen, and, and he, he'd like to see the process change with all this. I'm, I'm curious if, if you have a thought on that. Yeah, I think each one of us have our own uh, – individual experiences but as a you know as a black man playing in the NBA you know dealing with a lot of this uh this stuff is is fairly difficult uh you know because you never know when it can happen uh or what's going to happen at the end of the game or before the game uh so banning fans I get the objective uh but at the same time it doesn't stop people from running on the court I've had a situation where in Cleveland where people have run on the court uh you know I've had situations so all so often uh, throughout my career where, you know, we don't really talk about it because we want to be mentally tough. We want to be tough minded. We don't want to be called soft or, or, you know, we're not man enough to deal with booze and, you know, fans never block my shot. So I'm not worried about that type of physical, uh, you know, type of violence. It's just, you know, when, when they start doing things that are just out of character, you know, just getting belligerently drunk. And, um, you know, that's just what sports is. You mix drunk people out in the crowd that are cheering for the, their team, you know, you have some fans that are there to watch the, the quality of the game, and then you have a mix of in between, and then you got this intermixing, and then now we don't know who's who. Um, but like I said, I just want to move on from this, man. You know, I, I've, I've dealt with it as a player here as a Celtic um, of different things, and now being an opponent again, uh, you know, I just want to move on. So 